Welcome back, everyone. All right, end of day three trailer camper build. Um, basically, what I got done mostly, I know some of you guys are excited about this, is the Foxy Ride. It is just tied up um, with a clamp right now. I got to get some a friend over to help me uh, measure from the hubs to the coupler that I installed, uh, welded that in, and basically, I think it's there, but. I have to uh, just want to double check before I start welding it down. So that is important. Always double weld. Um, then what I did is I also put the coupler on, as you can see. So that was fine. It's just a two inch standard ball um, on the two inch frame. Been using the titanium uh, 125 Harbor Freight welder. Then what else I did too is my plan is you can see these little brackets I put in all the way across. Um, I know a lot of people like to sandwich. The flooring, this is upside down, the trailer, obviously. Um, so what I plan on doing, instead of sandwiching a layer of plywood over the top, then a layer of insulation, then another layer of plywood, I figure that's going to give me, you know, inch and a half, two inches of height off the deck. I'm trying to keep it as low as possible so it fits inside the garage um, in the future. So what I did was, maybe unique or not, um, put these tabs in. What I'm going to plan on doing is from the other side is put a piece of quarter inch plywood down. Then what I'll do is so, so I'll have this the plywood there. Then I'm going to put the insulation. I could put one inch insulation inside between the rails and then uh, the one layer of three quarter inch plywood on the other side. So that'll be the floor to the uh, camper itself. I figure it only lose three quarters of an inch or half inch plywood, depending on which size I buy. Um, with a lot of these supports, I could probably get away with half inch, but so I figure that I'll save me at least a good inch to inch and a half of height um, sandwiching and allow me to get more insulation um, in there. So the front subsection, that's gonna be solar power, batteries, everything else in the front. It's gonna be a box, uh, more like a square top camper. Um, so up front is gonna be all that. Um, you'll have side access to those, um, put ventilation in it, because I do plan on putting, on one side is the Chinese cheap heater um, on the one side, and then on the other side is gonna be batteries and solar panels and all the, uh, uh, electrical portion then what I'll do is I'll run it through the um, the bulkhead let's call it and then back across so in the front's gonna be the TV and stereo and all the other fun stuff and then I'll run all the electric back so basically the sleeping area the sides that I'm gonna be interested in insulating is the front two the one the second then I'm gonna do below the axle here I'm thinking about putting According to the website, uh, I haven't ordered it yet, but the water tank needs 14 inches. So this right here is just beyond 14 inches, so it should fit perfectly there. Um, then I'll put more tabs on this one and, um, you know, insulate that. The back one is going to be the galley, so I don't really feel I need insulation there um, to keep anything cold or hot or anything else. So... Um, I think we're fine. I'm thinking about under floor storage. Um, read a lot about it. It seems to be a great feature that everyone or option people order on their campers. Teardrops and square tops. But a lot of people say they don't use it. It's a pain to access and those kind of things. So I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do that or not at this point. But um, uh, it could easily go inside the tabs and just put a little box. I was going to put one on this side and one on this side. Um, so two little storages um, that go in there and kind of hinge in the middle uh, along this bar. So it's going to clamshell up. And then the other side's going to clamshell up from the inside. Um, not too deep. Um, probably try to keep it below the height of the axle. Um, just depending on um, the overall height of the trailer and if I feel there's any issues there or anything else but i figure that should be a good spot you know leaves me from back behind that a-frame uh bar back um you know nothing huge but it's definitely going to be uh, extra storage so got to see if it's worth it or not at this point i'm kind of leaning towards no um love your feedback comments of anyone that actually owns one um logic behind it i just hear that it is a 
pain to access. Um, I should have a lot of storage, plus the car could hold a bunch of stuff as well. So I'm not too worried about it. Any questions, anything else? Been using the Harbor Freight uh, welder titanium. I will say these gloves that I bought at Harbor Freight are terrible. Already have a blister from the welder on my hand. Um, that's the three pack for 10 bucks. Um, I do have the other leather set down there, but they are kind of came apart as well. Um, so definitely buy extra, extra gloves, but been using their grinders. Um, and clamps and pretty much a lot of the Harbor Freight equipment um, go from there. The side rails are two by three um, with quarter or eighth inch, two by twos on a couple of the ones, some two by threes. I try to maximize the lengths of steel at 24 feet come in. This middle for the axle is a two by two at quarter inch. So it's a really substantial piece. Um, these axles are heavy. Um, and then I got the Pro Comp. 15 by 8 wheel um, went to the store bought a bunch of hardware flexi ride takes um, half inch on the 3500 uh, minimum five grade so that's what i got so hopefully that um seems to be bolting up i got some washers and lock nuts as well so or lock washers so we'll see how that goes any questions please don't hesitate um love the feedback love the questions please subscribe and like the video thanks bye